your day going? Our very first uh, First Peoples Fund Resilience Webinar Series. My name is Hilary Presigan. I am the Program Manager of Community Development for the Native Arts Professional Development. Um, so the summary of the FPF Resilience Webinar Series is a newly created webinar series that has been developed to continue our work to enhance the business and entrepreneurial skills of Native artists and cultural bearers, as well as expand our virtual community during these rapidly changing times. Every week, First Peoples Fund and our nationally recognized Native Art Artist Professional Development Trainers, or NAPD Trainers, will deliver, deliver values-based, topic-focused webinars on Mondays, followed by Technical Assistance, TA, office hours every Wednesday to follow up, on answer, follow up and answer any questions regarding um, the Monday webinar. Uh, today's webinar topic is keeping your vision central to your art um, and just wanted to share too that for the month of May uh, we do have some confirmed um, trainers as well as um, subjects but the titles of the topics are yet to be announced. Um, we have a marketing focus with Roxanne Best. Um, we also have a performing arts focus with Ten um, Tanea Winder and in addition, um, we will be having an artist calendar focused with Leslie Deer. Um, some housekeeping I wanted to share with um, everybody on Facebook Live as well as here on the Zoom call is that we have some future really cool events um, coming up through FPF virtually speaking. Um, Rolling Res Arts is excited to kick off uh, the first events um, of its virtual arts calendar um, celebration. The Rolling Res Arts Program is dedicated to bringing folks from Indian country and surrounding communities the expertise and disciplines of artists within the First Peoples Fund family. On Wednesday, May 6th, we will launch a uh, beadwork demonstration by FPF um, Artist Business Leadership Fellow alum, Melina Parker. Saturday, May 23rd, Michael Tubles will, give a, will go live on Facebook with a printmaking demonstration on a cyanotype, I probably did not do well with <laughs> pronouncing that, but um, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, this live event will open up with a performance by a special guest artist. So please stay tuned for more First Peoples Fun, Rolling Res Arts, et cetera, uh, vir virtual arts celebration, um, as well as um, things regarding the fellowship and other um, resilience webinar series through our Facebook um, page, as well as our website. Um, so as I said earlier, this, uh, this is recorded in which um, will be available within 48 hours uh, after the webinar is concluded. Um, people that are in Zoom will probably get an email from us and we'll also probably be posting this as well on our social media pages, links to be able to watch this if you do miss it. Um, please keep yourself muted throughout this uh, presentation. I believe that I do have everybody, um, everybody on mute, but uh, if somebody has a, a question, because this is a one hour presentation with a 30 minute Q&A, I will be checking the chat box in Zoom as well as um, any discussion or questions that may come up through Facebook Live. So please send me your questions and I will share it with um, Teresa. Let's see here. Um, looks like that. Yep, the webinar topic is keeping your vision central to your art. And now I have the honor um, and privilege to introduce Teresa Secord. She is from the Penobscot Nation. Um, she is our 2009 Community Spirit Honoree, an artist and business leadership fellow consultant and NAP excuse me, NAPD trainer. So thank you, Teresa. Thanks so much, Hillary. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be here this afternoon and presenting this webinar. As Hillary said, um, you know, a lot of our community is online now. And so um, we're kicking off this resilience series today and, you know, hoping this can be of value to you. And um, definitely feel free to tune in on Wednesday for the follow-up kind of Q&A. And I, I'm actually going to be giving you some homework if, if you so choose to accept the assignment for Wednesday. So, um, you know, we can talk about that then. So the intent of the webinar is to remind Native artists to keep your values and vision at the center of your art practice during this really challenging time of COVID-19 
now more than ever, we need to stay true to who we are as Native artists, projecting the values of strength, generosity, fortitude, our community spirit, et cetera. Uh, the webinar is going to share examples of other Native artists. Some may even be on this webinar, fellows, uh, First Peoples Fund family of fellows, um, using their values in their own art um, to support others and um, sharing new ways of creating and marketing. Despite the cancellations, postponements, and lost opportunities that many of us as Native artists are facing during this pandemic, where can we find the opportunity again based in our own value systems? And as a product, like I said, if you will, we're gonna discuss um, drafting or editing your own values-based artist statement, highlighting your practice and accomplishments, and a financial needs statement describing how the COVID-19 crisis has affected your financial well-being. These are, the, the reason I'm um, proposing that we do these are that there are two necessary components now that we're seeing in these artist relief resilience grants that are being offered. And um, we're talking, you know, they're like 300 words each. So it's not, a, it's not a big assignment, but it can be really useful and valuable. I think even for, even for um, you know, more advanced artists to come back to your own, you know, vision and values through your artist statement and, you know, to update during this time. So those of you who've been around the First Peoples Fund family for a while, you know that um, our core values of generosity, respect, strength, humility, wisdom, integrity, fortitude, community spirit, among many others, are the foundation of the work that First Peoples Fund does in honoring and supporting artists um, throughout Native North America. Native artists embody these values that help shape their vision for their own artist businesses. In our Native Artist Professional Development Training, um, which I'm guessing some of you have been involved in, we have an eight-part two-day training series that we usually deliver in um, tribal communities. And unfortunately, during this time, um, you know, this is, this is how we're delivering online virtually. And I really appreciate your attendance here. Um, so the first in the resilience series is the vision and values section, um, fondly known as tab one in our, in our um, NAPD training series. So um, this is Jody Naranjo Falwell, who's a native, uh, who's a Santa Clara Pueblo potter. She's also um, a board member at First Peoples Fund and she's a Community Spirit Award recipient. Um, the one term I guess I wanna to bring to your attention here is collective spirit too. And that's, that's uh, that which manifests a self-awareness and sense of responsibility to sustain the cultural fabric of, of a community. And, for those of you who know Jody, she, she surely embodies that um, collective spirit and, um, you know, in her Santa Clara, Clara Pueblo community as the matriarch of a multi-generational family of potters. And, um, you know, many people, um, you know, in your own communities, I'm sure, who embody this um, community and collective spirit. And um, again, I mentioned the homework below and not to be, not to be worried about that. Um, right out of our manual again, the NAPD, if any of you have this training manual, you can follow along in that regard. But um, we're, we're soon going to deviate from that because I've been spending a lot of time online, which I'm sure a lot of you have been as well, and been really um, impressed with seeing some of the First Peoples Fund fellows um, posts and how they're embodying these values that are so inherent in our cultures. And, and again, during, during this time when, you know, a month ago it was almost like time to panic, you know, because markets were drying up and, um, you know, a lot of us were facing losses of immediate income, immediate losses of income. So this is John Isaiah Pepion, Blackfeet Pecani, um, who is a First Peoples Fund fellow and a, um, a, a great artist. He embodies to me this um, value of generosity through this, this post that he made about a month ago, where as students were just beginning to be schooled at home in these uh, stay at home 
uh, quarantine times, he offered up this coloring book page on the left uh, for, um, you know, children to, to use. And I, I thought that was really great. I have young grandnephews who are boys and, um, you know, they, this, and they, they're actually the father's a hunter and this image really resonated with them. And so, um, again, I want to encourage you to go to other artists' Facebook pages and websites and see what they're doing, how they're keeping their values and vision at the center of their art practices today. Oh, and John is also a NAPD trainer for us. And of course, this is his original art on the right-hand side and his website. For those of you who know Louis Gong, it wouldn't surprise you to see that his um, recent post embodies the value of spirit. Um, Eighth Generation is a, is a company that he started. Um, Louis is Nooksack, and he's also a First Peoples Fund Artists and Business Leadership Fellow. And he pretty much started this support inspired natives, not native inspired movement, which a lot of us were, you know, really becoming frustrated by uh, a couple of years ago with so much cultural appropriation going on. And so he started um, by selling, you know, blankets and other, um, you know, native art insignia products that really to kind of um, offset the Pendleton blankets, if you will. And so again, you could see one of John Isaiah Pepion's, uh, John Pepion's uh, blankets here with the buffalo. And then, um, of course, in Louis' post, he talks about how um, they kind of took a pause in their regular work and, you know, got a hold of um, 10,000 10, masks for these, you know, PPE products to donate to the Seattle Indian Health Board. And so, um, you know, I think this is really, um, again, embodying um, the type of spirit or community spirit that is um, admirable. Holding up... Uh, each other in the artist community is also um, a great value. Um, and I think this speaks to integrity. Um, Louis had a post on the left, Louis Gong on his Facebook that talks about how we as individual artists can support each other, support native businesses. Um, and again, this, in, this embodies our own values of holding each other up. So leaving online reviews for other native artists when you go to their website or, um, you know, purchase a product, um, sharing their posts to social media, you know, sharing uh, artists' um, success or projects they're working on, you know, so that we can help get the word out about what other artists are doing. And um, tagging, tagging some friends on a post. Um, I saw this last week or a couple of weeks ago with Wade Patton, who was conducting this really cool um, live drawing um, piece in advance of a virtual art show that he has coming up in a online reception May 15th and he's playing music by another fellow First Peoples Fund fellow Mick Jordan so um, again like a, a shout out to other artists so holding each other up in this time of emergency which is you know again a great value. I see um, artists too in these uh, collectives. And this is a great example, again, full of um, First Peoples Fund Fellows, Creative Indigenous uh, Collective. Once again, I, I shout out to John Pepion. He's just really an active artist on social media. And so I don't mean to keep picking on him, but his art is on the left in this Betsy challenge that um, showed up on their Facebook page. And so this is a collective of Plains artists in Montana who I think really um, portray values of strength and fortitude that during this time um, and, and prior to, you know, these are, these are very rural artists who um, have banded together in rural settings and, you know, they have shared values and shared vision. And so they're marketing their work together. And um, I guess even the previous slide, holding each other up in these, in these uh, challenging times. And so, Again, still in that kind of little three photograph Betsy challenge, I see um, Ben Pease's work on the top right and Robert Martinez on the bottom. And so the three artists in that challenge of the Betsy art. And then, so Ben was live um, Friday night. And again, for those of you who follow Facebook, you might've seen this, where he was um, creating a community collaborative art piece. 
And again, so this shows, um, you know, community values and collaboration. It was really fun to kind of watch. And um, he was taking a Sharpie and people were kind of shouting out, you know, phrases and writing them on the art pieces, which was, which was really interesting. I haven't seen anyone do that before. And someone said, um, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. So he had a Sharpie and he was writing on one of those sculptures there. And so that was, that was really neat to see. Uh, this was something that really resonated with me as well. Um, Racing Magpie um, does a lot of collaborative work around Rapid City with similar artists and fellows, and they do great work in, through their Magpie Creative um, Facebook page. And they were um, conducting a virtual artist residency with this artist, Alex Romero Frederick. And um, so she was live um, showing how to make baby moccasins. And, I was just intrigued by by everything about it. Um, she talked about her vision of um, trying new ways of getting getting her art out there, and so um, she was speaking also about um, supporting native owned businesses um, for her supplies and equipment and materials, and the fact that she always buys native owned if if she can. And so again, this kind of generosity and spirit and um, you know, supporting other artists and, um, and, you know, shouting out the native owned companies that she patronizes. But also I was intrigued by just kind of all the technology too, where she was um, Instagram live and, you know, connecting with Zoom. And so you could see her demonstrating and then see the work up close and she was sharing materials and equipment that she uses. And so, um, I don't know, I just think it's, it's really neat in this time with social media and these different virtual mediums that we can bring our values um, in our creative process to, to, you know, live to share with other native artists. And I like the how-to video as well because I'm mentoring my son in basketry and I really wanna be able to um, be more effective. Um, so far, we've just been doing some FaceTime and so actually leading to that is um, me. And this is a photo of, of me on an iPad <laughs> with my grandnephews. And they had a social, uh, of course, their home being schooled by their mom. And so we connected to do a distance learning project where they could braid sweetgrass braids. And um, that was really fun. They haven't had a chance to work with them before. And so we did that. I'm on the little iPad there, uh, FaceTiming with them. And then um, I'm teaching my 28 year old son. I have to say, I kind of call this shifting values because for me as an elder now, I'm really thinking um, longer term um, about, you know, when and if something happens to me, what is my legacy and how are my son, how is my oldest son in particular has a propensity for weaving can he, you know, carry on this tradition independently from start to finish? It's a lot, you know, it's, it's something to be able to sit down and make a basket with me, but it's a lot to go from the materials off of the tree we weave in ash, wood, um, and sweetgrass to the finished basket. And so um, this is a photograph of one of his baskets. And then that's his great, great grandfather's business card going back a hundred years. And and the tool on the left is called the gauge, and that will be handed down to my son as well. And, um, you know, that goes back easily to the 1800s. So I have this legacy in my family. We have intellectual property, as well as, um, you know, cultural and, and tribal traditions, family weaves. And um, so now my values have shifted back to this mentoring phase after 30 something years of basket making where I really want to make sure that this legacy in my family is, um, is carried on. I, I saw this post the other day, and I guess I'm just sharing this too, to encourage you to, you know, be active on social media. There's a lot going on, a lot of great ideas. And I, I'm inspired by other people and seeing other people, um, you know, sharing their values and, um, you know, keeping their own work going, but also reaching out and, and helping the community. So Bethany was talking about um, how she was going to be um, launching a big collection, a spring collection of her clothing and, and jewelry and beadwork artists 
in May and instead she's busy, you know, helping um, with um, personal protective gear for um, this COVID-19 response and especially in the Southwest and some of the Pueblos. And so again, kind of like Louis Gong, you know, in a, a, a larger company perspective, but still with the values that um, I think are really admirable and um, a vision to, to, you know, walk the talk to, to, um, you know, have her own art and art business, but also to really be embodying all those values that Native communities and Native artists hold dear and, and, you know, emulate. So your values, your cultural identity and artwork are inextricably interconnected. Um, I guess I'm showing that to, you know, whether you have a company or a small entrepreneurial art practice. So understanding and embracing your values and identity will help with your arts making, also your relationships. This is kind of right out of our training guide. But I also want to say um, in these times too, of, um, if, if you do need help, um, it will also help project you know, um, valid need that artists, entrepreneurs have right now in these COVID-19 times need to apply for funding for grants. Um, I will share my personal experience of applying for a few grants um, the last few weeks and heard nothing, nothing, nothing. And then on Friday, I got a couple of these grants. So that's gonna enable me to keep my artwork going and not have to apply for unemployment for the self-employed, which um, I would encourage you to do if you need to um, right now between you know some of these consulting gigs that I have, including this one and and a couple of these grants. So um, I'm going to click on this artist relief live link, and uh, I will share. It's probably not going to be as smooth as I hope, but um, this is one of the ones that that I applied for and was successful. So this is a five thousand dollar grant that is distributed by um, largely the funder is United States Artists. For those of you who know that organization and um, pretty straightforward grant as far as grants go. Um, you know, this is outside of the usual kind of having to have all of these ducks lined up. I think this one is a series of questions and then two 300 word statements, which we're going to talk about. And one is this artist statement that I talked about. And the other one is the kind of artist need statement, if you will, which talks about your financial need. And they're each only 300 words long, which is, which is really pretty short. Um, going to the FAQs, I guess, frequently asked questions. I wanna show you what um, is interesting here is that there, there's a significant amount of funding here. And a lot of people have applied um, like thousands but if you keep applying, you have, I think, a really good chance of being successful. Um, these are the different cycles that you can apply in. So I applied in the first cycle, probably halfway through and thought, oh, yeah, I've heard they've had thousands of applications. And then some of the grant initiatives, and I'll show the link to the larger ones after we go back to that slide, have already closed because they've been overwhelmed. But this one isn't going to close as far as I can tell. They're gonna to continue to have cycles all through the summer. So I wanna urge you to continue to look at this and continue to throw an application in there because I threw one in Friday morning and I was shocked to find out you know, around noontime that I was successful and I, I, I surely didn't expect it. And so I guess that's me exercising a value of fortitude or something that I always keep trying and um, you know, it's, it's, it's truly a big help. That's a, that's a nice um, amount of funding. And so um, going back, I hope I didn't go through here too fast. And we can talk about this and also go into this in more detail if you want on Wednesday. Um, can't remember if, we, if I have to be registered, but I do have the questions on another piece of paper. So I'll bring that. And I can even share which kinds of questions you're gonna ask. I mean. I'll be upfront, I'm a experienced grant writer, so it didn't take me long, but I'll be surprised if it takes most people more than an hour after you have all of your materials together. And again, these two 300 word statements are going to be um, important for you. Hoping you're not seeing my, my email messages that are popping up as we're talking. Okay, so 
I'm hoping you were able to see that screen. Now I'm wondering if I didn't do the screen share right. Hmm. Okay, back to this um, screen then, the NDN Collective Grant. This is um, a little bit more advanced. So I just showed the artistrelief.org and I'm sorry if I, I might not have gone out and shared the screen correctly. I see that that might have been something I didn't do. So I apologize for that. Um, but the NDN Collective one is a grant that you can apply and I'll go into that $5,000 one more on Wednesday. The NDN Collective one is a little more um, involved and you can apply for up to $10,000 for this one. In addition to um, kind of who you are and what your values based art practice is and also what your financial needs are during this time of COVID-19, they're also going to want to know what your outcomes are or, or, or what, are your, what are your goals. And this is where I want to encourage people to look ahead and think about um, the upcoming markets and events and uh, particularly, you know, this, this summer and what, what you may be missing, you know, what kind of income would you be missing if you're an artist who typically, um, you know, is dependent upon quite a bit of summer income, which those of us who are in the Indian markets surely are. I mean, this is a big now and upcoming this summer, this is a big season for our income. Um, so this one's going to ask for a little more information than the other. It's going to take more time. And I would say not to discourage an emerging artist, but, you know, you're going to have to have some more ducks lined up, work samples, maybe links to your work, you know, YouTube channel, um, wherever uh, your creative work samples are. And then the last one, the creativecapital.org, I really urge you to go to that link and look at the other grants opportunities that are available, there are grants opportunities for $1,000. And again, these are not that hard to apply for. A number of them are overwhelmed already and some of them close. So I do encourage you to apply early. The NDN Collective grant just opened Friday. So those of you who are thinking about it should not wait. I think it's kind of the early bird gets the worm on these. I can't speak for that initiative. But I'm, I'm seeing that at certain points, these grants get overwhelmed and they close and they say, you know, we have way more requests than we're going to be able to fund. Um, but I think I heard that the Indian Collective is going to give up to 80 to Native artists. And, and that's really quite generous. You don't have to ask for the whole $10,000 on that one either. But under the um, listing in this creativecapital.org, website. Um, there's a, there are a lot of opportunities there. One is um, still open, Foundation for Contemporary Arts Emergency Grants, for example, and that's for $1,500. So if you're a contemporary artist, which many of, you know, the younger Native artists are, I would definitely encourage you to look at that link, copy this, and um, I don't know, take, take screenshots, if you will. Um, let's see how we're doing on time and if I have time. You know what I think I'll do is go back to that Artist Relief website at the end of the webinar because I think I was trying to share a screen and then I didn't use the um, share screen tab is what I'm guessing. So all that time I was scrolling through and talking about FAQs. Okay, so um, moving ahead to get into this, what am I talking about when I talk about an artist statement and um, it's it's basically your your vision again uh, based in your based in your values as a native artist. So for me, I've shared a little bit already about what my three hundred word artist statement looks like. It talks about my thirty years of work in arts preservation. I worked with a community of basket makers to help um, revive the basketry in the Passamaquoddy, Penobscot, um, Mi'kmaq, and Maliseet tribes here in Maine for about 20 years I've, I've mentored. And so, um, you know, this is, this is where my value system is based. And so it has to do with intergenerational transfer of, you know, wisdom or knowledge. And um, even my own art kind of reflects like family weaves and styles that I've seen in the last 200 years in the kind of basketry record in my family. And my vision, as I mentioned, talks about, you know, mentoring and even coaching other artists is, is important to me. And this is, this is why I'm here today. Uh, so how do you identify your own values? Um, well, you know, some of you, of course, are probably thinking about them as I'm going through here and you already have, you know, 
have a strong sense of this. So I would just ask then that you think about how your values shifted, what is most important to you now, like always sharing with myself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the, you know, aging and, and what is important for me going forward if, you know, something does happen and, you know, how, how what do I think about, you know, for my family and the people around me and my community. So um, this, this will help you. And so um, answering these five questions and also listing some of your accomplishments can, can get you a long way into this 300 word artist statement that I'm talking about and, and we, can, we can talk about further. And then for the needs, the financial needs statement, I mean, a lot of this is, is confidential, so I'm not saying to share this. These are the questions that the Artist Relief Grant asked. So for that $5,000 grant that I mentioned, um, these are the questions that really, I think I kind of filled in, filled in the blanks. Um, and, and, and again, I will say, um, be very clear about the percentage, um, like the fifth one down of art income and the percentage of art income lost, um, projecting out over several months. So I had a friend who, we were talking a few weeks ago and we were like, well, you know, um, we're married, we have, you know, husbands who have income and maybe we should leave these grants for other people who are more needy. And then I thought, wait, but you know, there will be no income this summer at all that I'm accustomed to for the basketry income, which for me is a full one half of my income. And so that's not gonna help, you know, contribute to the family if I don't have uh, that income. And, and for me, I'll just share, um, you know, again, in, in my age group, my health insurance is enormous, the cost of that monthly. And so I was thinking, well, wow, that's going to be a, a real hardship to keep to, to pay that bill. And so sharing things like that, um, not saying to share it publicly, but I'm just saying really think about what your need is. I mean, yes, it's great if we have companies and we could be generous. But in this time, you know, um, you also need to take care of yourself, you know, and, and that might be, you know, the way to be in touch with your own values that you need to take care of yourself for your family's sake. And your financial income is, is really important way of taking care of yourself. Um, so here, this was the big event that's not happening for me this year. And this would have been, I think my 15th year. Um, and so the Santa Fe Indian market is about a third of my annual income. And so half of my annual income is from basket sales. And this was about a third of that annual income, this one show. And for many, um, it's more like a half and even almost 100% for the artists, you know, who market in that show from the nearby Pueblos and tribes. And so it's, it's really almost a tragedy, you know, when we, when we receive this announcement. So some... Um, some shows are going online and, um, you know, that's, that's going to be interesting. Um, how resilient are, are, are we going to be able to be with that? You know, there's one coming up here in May and I've heard others in their communities talking about that. And so a virtual Indian market will be a new experience. Um, for me, I think I'm looking forward to that a little bit of intrepidness as a value um, that resonates with me sometimes. I like to try new things. And so, um, and it also is gonna push me to have more of a presence online, which I think we all have come to, you know, in our, in our current value systems, you know, that we really need to be um, resilient right now. Um, and then is this a chance to build new inventory? A lot of times, um, some of us in the Indian market circuit are creating art for the Indian market. So isn't it nice to have some time where you're not just driven by that deadline and making the art that you know that will sell in that market? In a way, it's a gift in this time to be able to tap into some other creative energy and, and values and you know a, a new vision really for where you wanna take your art and then can you target sales on the internet? Um, when I came home from the herd market in March, um, I came home with some extra inventory that I don't usually have, smaller baskets that should have sold. And so I, uh, that was in Phoenix in early March. And so things were starting to happen then. The show attendance was down 
And so I decided to see what would happen if I targeted um, some sales on Facebook. And so I put up a couple of pieces on, uh, it's kind of a hokey name of this Facebook page. It's called For the Love of Indian Baskets. But it's a great group, um, really knowledgeable collectors are on there. And now, which is great, a lot of native basket makers, we all kind of congregate there. And um, uh, one small basket I had sold within 24 hours. So just starting to test market myself and see what I can do. Of course, like many artists, I need to update my website. It's, it's, it's old and dated and, uh, you know, things have to happen there. So um, a new online store is, is looking at, you know, something in my future. So um, having to learn new ways. Um, I, I put this out on the First People's Fund Facebook page, uh, Fellows page, a few weeks ago, just as, um, again, sharing some of the tips that I'm doing, um, communicating with past buyers, you know, if you do have um, a collector's list and trying to stay in touch um, with people to let them know, especially, um, you know, what's going on, especially if you were possibly going to be seeing them at some markets or shows or galleries or art openings in the coming months. I highly recommend that you um, get in touch and share what you're working on, you know, what are your new ideas or, you know, just, just recent, recent works that, you know, you can, you can share, take this opportunity to be in touch. And we talked about marketing on social media and Roxanne Best will, will do a great job with that, I'm sure, next week. And um, updating your website. Um, let's see. Uh, I do talk about this as guilty as anyone. I kind of try to clean up your Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, I'm, I'm going to show an example in a minute of someone who's doing some really great social media posts. He's a friend from Oaxaca, Mexico. He's a He's a rug weaver for a very traditional family there, but he does contemporary work. He actually lives in California, but he's still closely connected to his family and community in Oaxaca. And his posts are just really brilliant where he's sharing his family's values and vision for keeping the traditional art alive and the traditional dyes. And at the same time, seriously needing to market their art. And so then you go to an online store and, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a, one of the better examples I've seen of someone coordinating social media marketing right now. And so talking about trying to do, which I'm as guilty as anyone having a few less posts about, you know, food and your pets and, and other things, if you're really trying to market on social media. Uh, okay. So this is my friend, um, Porfirio, and um, you can see his work is stunning. These are some of the more contemporary pieces. But then on the, um, on the um, April 17th post, you can see his family is grinding that cochineal, which is um, really interesting red dye that's made from a insect um, on these um, cactus plants, which are hanging up to dry in the, in the um, kind of family warehouse there in Oaxaca. And I'm gonna try to go to his site. And this time I'm going to remember that we're going to um, the web and hoping, hoping that you can see this. Um, sharing his website and um, this is a Square um, website online store. And so I'm intrigued by that too, because a lot of us use Square for our sales. And so I, I don't know, you know, what it will take to make a site like this, but um, this is what I'm looking at. And so again, his social media posts over the last probably three or four weeks have driven a lot of sales to this, to this website. He sold um, a lot of pieces online. And um, you can see his beautiful posts too in photography. These are his parents weaving and other people in the village. And the reason he, and it links with his Facebook page. Uh, again, let's see if I can share. Okay, I guess I was there. Links with his Facebook page, so, um, and his Instagram, I'm sorry. So um, you can see past posts and um, again, the traditional dyes. And it almost is like, um, again, like a tourism site because 
His family is heavily based in tourism. And you can see they have really deep traditional ties and values and ceremony and um, traditional dyes and um, different kind of um, ancient techniques in their art practice with the, with the cactus that I talk about, making indigo dyes and cochineal out of insects. But um, there's not one tourist in Oaxaca, he said, and you know, when he started these posts last week. And so this is an act of, um, you know, really needing to get the sales online. And, and I have to share, I think he's been very successful, um, not a necessity because the tourists are the people, you know, the collectors of his art. So um, I just wanted to share that as a, as a great example. This is some of his contemporary work. I don't know if you can see my little pointer here, but like some of his things that look like basket weaves. And I met Porfirio at the National Museum of the American Indian in a leadership fellowship program that we were both in. Okay, so trying to get us back to the desktop. And hopefully we're all back in the same place. So we've talked about this networking with other um, artists on social media um, as something that's really important. And I just, I don't know, I can't emphasize that. I'm not, you can see how nosy I am on social media, looking around at what other people are doing. This is great ideas. And, and I like to share good posts and help, you know, drive traffic maybe to people's websites when I'm doing that. Um, there's some new marketplaces up and um, to, replace the uh well i can't i can't really say replace but to hopefully fill some of the gap with um the marketplaces physically being closed for the spring and probably the summer the social distance powwow one is kind of fun to watch and they actually have a social distance powwow and marketplace so if you go to that on facebook in the marketplace i see um first people's fun fellows and the artists and friends just you know throwing up art there and it's really neat to see and you know again driving traffic to their um, websites people having watch parties which i shared before um, like to learn how to do something like that i think maybe i'm not ready for that yet I'm a little bit shy and probably don't have enough inventory um, there's another one that's up called spring um, native artists online market I see some of my Indian market friends from both the herd market and Santa Fe Indian market posting there. Again, it's called spring native artists online market and that's on Facebook. And then another one I just found today, native American artists, comma musicians and writers. And that one seems to be kind of curated and they feature like a new artist each week. And again, I, I really recommend, um, going there and seeing what is being shared and think about, you know, sharing your own art there. Just really staying connected and, and planning for what's coming next, keeping your creative work at your center. These are all, um, you know, tips that I want to share. First People's Fund had its own um, resilience grant for First People's Fund fellows. And um, I don't know the numbers, but, um, dozens of artists received small grants from First People's Fund almost immediately. And I was really proud of that and First People's Fund in that some of the other grants take a while to, to get, um, you know, notification. And this is one of the things that First People's Fund's values really shine through in, a, in, in work like this is that this is a crisis, this is emergency need. And First People's Fund went right into action. Um, you did have to be a fellow to already be eligible for this, but I think they've done a second round. So if you are a First People's Fund fellow and you have need for this resilience grant, um, please, um, please apply. Because again, I'm encouraging you to look ahead for what is, what is not happening for you in the next few weeks and months where you need to generate income. So um, during the um, you know, normal times, we have grant making initiatives at First People's Fund. Um, these grants are not as nimble to receive as these artist relief grants. Um, but yeah, um, these programs have been around for a long time. And so the community spirit 
awards. I believe there'll be a call for nominations still this spring, like there usually is. Um, perhaps it's a, it's not on the same timeline, but watch the Free First People's Fund website um, and social media for that. And then um, those are nominations for someone in your community, like Jody Naranjo Falwell that I mentioned earlier, who are, you know, really working and um, selflessly to um, keep you know art going and to help other artists in the community by mentoring or whatever um, their collective spirit work may be and then artists in business leadership these are the um, business arts fellowships which some of you on this webinar may have received i know roxanne best who is our next webinar trainer uh, she's an abl fellow um, from uh, the colville confederated tribes up in washington state and then um, the cultural capital program. These are grants to conduct uh, specific cultural projects. And so that may be a intergenerational transfer of knowledge, you know, where you're mentoring someone else in your community. And those deadlines are typically uh, late summer, early fall for those grants that would be coming into place in 2021. So um, those latter two are $5,000 grants. And the first one is a $7,500 honoring. And um, so I'm not sure on that schedule anymore, you know, based on all that's going on, but um, I do encourage you to follow our website and apply for these opportunities. Um, this was a post I just um, saw this afternoon. I got again. <laughs> John, I'm definitely watching John. Um, I'll have to share with him if he's not on here that I'm quoting him heavily here. But I just, I, I thought this post was really cool. You know, it's, it's some of his art, his ledger art, um, but it's got a gray tone to it that this is, this, is a, this is a distressing and difficult time for many people, you know, being directly impacted by the illness or indirectly. And then the social distancing, a hardship for all of us. And yet he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm still creating work. He's still based in his values. Um, of course, he's online, like the rest of us, he's updating his website. Um, and, and then I like how he points out too that as artists, we're kind of social distancing a lot of the time anyway. You're in your studio, you're working out of your home, and so we can kind of relate to, you know, this isolation. But having a community of artists, you know, with common values, I think, really unites us. And um, I, I just think, um, you know, this is, this is so great that people are sharing more and reaching out more on social media. And I think I'm coming to the near the end of my presentation. And I just want to say what a pleasure it's been to present with you here today. Um, we will have this webinar series available at our Facebook page. Uh, I'm sorry, at our website. We have a, um, there's a little login there. And this is a long, complicated link. But the point is that if you go to the firstpeoplesfund.org, you'll be able to find uh, a number of webinars that we have there in a like a toolkit if you will and it talks about a login but it's really just your name and an email so we can see who is kind of logging in and you know making sure it's not a bot or something i guess and then on wednesday we'll have this office hour where um as soon as i'm done talking here in a couple of minutes we're going to have like a half hour question and answer and hillary's going to help me with that because she'll have been collecting Hopefully you're sending qu questions to the chat or any clarification, things you might want to talk about. But on Wednesday, we'll be able to go for an hour on this. If you want to go into that artist relief grant, for example, I'll be prepared to show you what that application looks like to the best of my ability, because I think you have to log in. And since I've already been a recipient, I'm not sure how far of that, but I definitely printed out my responses and the questions. So I'll be able to share what those questions are and we can talk through, you know, your particular case if you want, or we can message chat. And I want to share also my email. I'm kind of always there. Um, and if you have a direct question just for me, then I'm happy to answer. I, I do TA work, follow up with First People's Fund. And um, it's a real honor for me to, to do this work with you. Uh, so more information on First Peoples Fund and hopefully when we're back on the road, so to speak, we'll be doing these Native Artists Professional Development trainings in a community near you 
And so you could get the full two day training if you haven't already. And with that, I just want to thank everyone for your attention. I see 22 plus people are on here with me still, which is great. And uh, we'll look forward to some Q and A. Thank you. I'm just giving a nod to Hillary. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Teresa. That was wonderful. Um, I just didn't know if you wanted to jump in real quick and go back to that one page that was going gray when we first started sharing some of the links. You mentioned that a little earlier. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to share the screen. So let me go there and do that. And just why don't we, since we have a couple of more minutes. And I just didn't push um, screen share, <laughs> which was my fault. So um, how does that look, Hillary? Oh, it looks, oh, artist, the slide, yep. Artist relief page. There we you go, can, I see it, great. Okay, good, yeah. So this, I'm on the website. This is the one I really encourage people to apply for. And um, this was what I was talking about, scrolling when you were seeing gray, and I, I apologize for that. I'm gonna try again to go to the frequently asked questions. Are you seeing that, Hillary, FAQ? Yes. Okay, yep, good. I all right, so um, who's eligible? Um, pretty much um, anyone 21 years or older, um, you need to be an artist that is practicing in, in one of these disciplines, which most Native artists are. So this one is, is very good too. And sometimes, you know, it's contemporary and not traditional. Sometimes it's dance and not film. So this is everything, you know, pretty much multimedia. So again, um, and, and I'm happy to help people, you know, with this and we'll, we'll talk about the, um, that's the one that needs the 300 word artist statement and the 300 word financial needs statement. And what they talk about too is crafting that in um, a word processing doc so that you can cut and paste because in the beginning, in cycle one, April 8 through 13, um, applications were crashing. And so um, they're just saying, make sure you have that in there. But I'm not saying that to you know, intimidate because it worked fine for me on Friday. And that was the first day of the opening of cycle two. And I also think, um, you know, these are United States artists, um, I'll be honest with you, they have worked closely with First Peoples Fund, and they're aware that there are indigenous artists who have traditionally been underserved by um, grants in the grant world, shall we say. And so I think, I think it's worth your while to apply. Um, again, I'm still kind of surprised that I, that I got one. But, um, and keep applying. So I applied April 8th through the 23rd, nothing, and thought, okay, no, and then Friday morning, I had some extra time and said, why not throw it in? I mean, I'm a person who's applied for one particular grant like six times and a, a large grant, national grant, and gotten no six times. And so I just want to share that because I think, again, you know, kind of expressing those values of indigenous people, you know, that's, that's one that I do hold is fortitude. And, um, you know, it does pay off. So anyway, um, that was what I wanted to share. Um, you do have to create an account on Submittable. It's not, it's not very difficult. Um, again, I guess we're all used to creating accounts and having passwords now. Um, and I do, I do recommend you apply more than once. Um, we'll go back to that page and talk about the other one. Oh, screen share. Okay, back to the desktop. The Indian Collective one, like I said, is, is a little more involved. Those of you who have written grants, though, again, I highly recommend that you go to that one. Because I, I, again, I think looking at, you know, a, a diversity, they're going to be looking for diversity of artists across the nation. Um, we do have um, a webinar on writing grants and that, that's on our First Peoples Fund website. I did that one, I, I recommend that. And I do have a separate kind of tips in there for writing grants. Again, 
These are not extensive grant applications though, but I'm just saying that NDN Collective one is a little more extensive. And then when you're on the page, it's a little bit confusing, but you're looking for the individual artist and entrepreneur one. They also have grants for organizations. And so just, just try to click on that one and then it kind of sends you down below somewhere and just say apply here and see if you can get into that portal. They're really nice. I emailed, um, I think the person at the NDN Collective um, staff person in charge of this is, I think her name is Billy White, and I emailed her and she emailed me right back because I had a problem slash question. So I do recommend that too, getting in touch with them if you have any problems even setting up a uh, account or, or anything. Okay, now we're in the Q&A and I see there is a question. Okay, Kenny, is it okay, Hillary, to go into that? Yeah, sure. Um, I would just, um, I can just read the question out loud because people, okay, do. We, yeah, we have about over 14 people on Facebook. Live okay, good. Um, one of, one of our participants here in the zoom calls, um, just asked the question saying when creating a CV for grants, etc. for someone that does not have a huge academic background, how would you suggest highlighting experience? How far back should the CV go? and how detailed can one get? Right, well, that's, that's a really good question. I think um, going back, like, I, I think keeping it art centric is, is always critical, you know? So if you don't have a lot of academic, um, but you still have like demonstrations and museums, I mean, you've got to try to play upon whatever strengths there are there. So any type of art, um, you know, mentoring that you've done um, and or demonstrating um, classes. It, it's hard for me to know without seeing exactly. Um, but, um, you know, I think I, I try to keep a CV to two pages as well. That's a, that's, a, that's a good kind of rule of thumb. And then another thing I strongly suggest is going to other artists' websites and seeing their CV there. A lot of artists have um, a CV available for you to read at their website. And say there's an artist you admire who's in the same medium as you. Um, there are some very good examples out there. And I'm, I'm trying to think, um, First People's Fund does have that. Again, we have some examples in our training manual, but I'm guessing we don't have access to that. And I think we're going to have another webinar that addresses that. So I don't want to put off the question. But, um, and another thing is, I'm happy if you saw my email. I'll share it again. W-I-K, E as in Edward, P as in Paul, I, at G-W-I dot net. If you wanted to um, send it to me, I'd be happy to, you know, give you some tip. I mean, I don't consider myself an expert. But again, I have, you know, done some of this and I have been successful on more mature artists. I could, you know, maybe look at it and give you some tips. Okay, great. Thanks, Teresa. We do have a couple questions from Facebook Live that I'd like to share. Okay, sure. Um, Cheyenne St. John asked um, just a list. She was requesting a list of native vendors, um, a list of networks for native artists to share. Um, yeah. So it would, you mean the question of, um, you know, what are those Facebook pages that I mentioned or? I, I feel like that, yeah, it was a little, it was earlier on. Um, in okay. Your yeah. Yeah, because the, the ones that I was talking about, um, I'm seeing a lot of vendors there and it's, one is called Social Distance Powwow and Marketplace. And then there's also Social Distance Powwow, but the and Marketplace one is linked to it and that's where you're seeing a lot of people vending and then um the other one i mentioned was oh gosh i think it's called and i think it's meant to replace um you know spring indian markets i think called spring native artist market online and that you know there's like eight thousand people following that one um well, so that's a good one. And then the other one I mentioned was Native Artists, Musicians, and Writers. So if you're on Facebook and, you know, um, search for those and ask to, be, ask to be accepted, you should get in. 
Great. Um, and I just have one more question. It was from Melanie off Facebook Live. She says, hi, Teresa, can you post the slide with the artist grants? So is that something we could probably add to the page, Facebook page, maybe? Yeah, and that's the one that's showing right now. Okay. That must be the one. So why, why don't we? Yeah, I'll just I'll just cut and paste that and um, and that way people have the link. We've shared them separately on our Facebook page, but I'll, I'll show this slide for sure, Hillary, if you want to. Wonderful. I'll do like a screenshot. And then I have a question here from uh, Kenny on Zoom. Are you still there, Kenny? And um, again, I, I'm definitely happy to help, you know, provide some feedback on your application because he did apply in the first cycle. And so he's, and I'm definitely encouraged that you're talking about applying for again, because I, I would definitely encourage that. And um, for sure. And again, let me type in my email. Because we've met and everything. And even if we hadn't, I'd send it to you. <laughs> so you could just send me that if you want. And I'm hoping to help. Uh, anybody else with questions? We have a little bit of time left. This is kind of our first time doing this live question and answer. And I think another thing would be great too is if um, if people come on Wednesday to our you know one hour session with the artist statement and artist need kind of workshop, if you will. Um, if you come with ideas of other great models of artists marketing online, um, sharing their vision and values, you know, based work, that would be really neat to have an exchange. Anybody else out there have any questions or comments? I just posted on Facebook Live asking if anybody had any questions they wanted to share. Okay, sure. Yeah, these, um, this one link again that I'm showing on the screen, creativecapital.org is, um, I don't, it, maybe people can take a screenshot of this too while I'm holding it up there because it, it takes some digging, but if you dig through there, like I said, I found one in there that's still open that's called the Foundation for Contemporary Arts. And um, I'm steering you, you know, towards as many as possible, I guess, um, thinking you'll have the best chance. But um, and certainly the two on the top where I'm seeing and hearing of Native artists being successful. I mean, the second one, NDN Collective, that initiative just opened on Friday. So that remains to be seen. You know, I'm sure they'll get a lot of applicants. But um, again, I think, and once you develop these materials, you know, save them because you just keep, you can keep throwing that artist release, relief one in there. And for um, Kenny, who asked me the question earlier, I really don't think I changed my application very much at all on the second artistrelief.org, you know, the, the second call for applications on Friday. I, I really, I think I only wordsmithed it a little bit. I, I don't think it failed because, um, I don't think they failed to choose it because it wasn't what they were looking for. I think there were just so many. And so I think that's, that's why, you know, the whole not giving up and continue and try. And perhaps they had a different set of reviewers. Um, so I, I think, you know, it does warrant continuing to try. And it's not always like if you didn't get a positive response from the grant or I, I didn't get any answer at all in the first round. It doesn't mean keep trying. Uh, let's see. Are there any other questions? I'm going to the Q&A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing new with Facebook Live and it looks like through um, the chat, um, there's nothing new. Okay, well, I want to encourage people and Hillary, you will email a reminder for the 2 p.m. kind of little workshop where we can go in depth if people want on their artist image. And I, and I welcome the CV also that, you know, who wanted to bring a you know, talk about a resume too, because some of these grants are asking for that as an additional documentation. I think the NDN Collective, you could send that if you wanted. Not all of them are asking for that. 
but it does it does make sense to have an updated one in these challenging times you know and one again that reflects your values and vision because and we keep coming back to that because i think that's what makes us stronger and you know um unique uh, for lack of a better word as as native artists you know um really um our, a lot of our practices are based in our ancestors you know values and and the vision for our people and our communities and so it's it's really important to be able to convey that and um it helps you be more true to who you are too in your art making and your practice and in how you project yourself as an artist in these times I guess, Teresa, a question that I would like to ask just to um, follow up on what you just shared. What are some um, great advice or tips you can give people when they kind of feel like they're at their lull with being able to kind of remind, like, remind themselves of those vision and values when they kind of start feeling a little low? Do you have any in, input on that or some advice, some stuff that's worked for you? Yeah, again, I have to say, um, I, I do look around a lot at what other artists are doing, and I feel inspired, and I feel like, wow, if my friend Porfirio, <laughs> you know, <laughs> can sell his rugs online all the way from Oaxaca, Mexico, then I, I, can, I can do that too, you know, um, not in the same way and in different tradition, but um, I am really inspired by the network of artists that are around me and, you know, seeing, um, you know, different ways of, of people doing things. And then um, I guess I'll share personally too, yoga is a big part of keeping me centered daily. And um, I, I don't know, I have, there's particular practices there even that have to do with resilience, that have to do with, um, you know, being um, strong in times of, you know, challenging times and so things like that. So personally, and then of course my own art practice. And I, I usually weave my baskets kind of on deadlines for art markets. And so um, this is challenging me to, to get out of that rut, if you will. I, I think I think I could safely say that sometimes I just weave baskets to get ready for a market, things that I know that I'll sell. And then um, this thing with weaving with my son too is kind of bringing me back to some new and interesting things as I try to convey, you know, pass knowledge onto him, but also, you know, be an example myself in, in trying to create some new lines of work. And, and it is a struggle, you know, every day is like, I mean, we're, we're getting three to six inches of snow tonight. I mean, there's, there's no green grass yet. Um, it's, it's, it's dark and cold here. And so, I mean, I, I think we're all in this together too. I think that's what people need to remember. And, and we all kind of forget that, that this is such a unique and unusual and, you know, terrible time for a lot of people and um, challenging time. And so remembering that we're all part of this First Peoples Fund community and family of indigenous artists and, you know, really trying to reach out to, to each other as well. So I do that as well. I network with other basket weavers that I'm friends with. And we, we talk about like, well, what are we going to do now? You know, my, my, my good weaver friend that I share a booth with in Santa Fe. I mean, we spent that weekend kind of messaging like, oh my gosh, now what? You know, the 99th Santa Fe Indian market is postponed. It's not happening. And so, you know, how to adapt. Yeah, thank you so much, Reese, for sharing. That was okay. wonderful. Um, I did just get a new question from Michaela okay. Patton on Facebook Live. And I think she's talking in regards to the slide you currently have up for the, um, on the links of the PowerPoint. It's like, are all these resources available for native artists only? No, no, uh, the one in the middle, NDN Collective, is the one available for native artists only. Um, I think that's the only one that I know about that is, except for the First Peoples Fund, which was for First Peoples Fund fellows only. And uh, there've been a couple like that too. Native Arts and Cultures Foundation also had one for fellows only. But I, but I will say again, going back to the artistrelief.org one, that um, I, I do know that they are trying to 
select, you know, a, a wide and diverse group of artists. And um, I do know Native artists who are starting to get approval on that one, including myself. Great. I'll try to go to the live link on this other one, the Creative Capital one. Let's see if I can share that screen. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is a, a post from over a month ago. And so I'm just going down and seeing the national grant. So some of these are already closed. I'm on this page now. Anonymous was a woman emergency relief grant and that one closed because, you know, of overwhelming. Um, you know, they basically got enough. Um, but the artist relief one we've talked about and that's the one that, you know, we went to that website and, and looked at. Uh, I think that's all the same. This arts and culture leaders of color emergency fund, I'm pretty sure that one's overwhelmed and closed as well. But I'm encouraging you to pick through because as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to look at, so, so go on this site for sure, Foundation for Contemporary Arts Emergency Grant. And that one I believe is still open unless I'm wrong and somehow nothing's coming up, Hillary. <laughs> Not your fault or mine, but pick around here and keep going because there's a, a real plethora of, of grants and I would just say um, the NIFA, interesting, talks about New York Foundation for the Arts, but they, they, it's not just for New York artists. Um, there's a lot of information there. and Sometimes it's almost overwhelming, but I would say like devote some time each day to this, um, you know, if you can, because it, it really won't it really won't hurt. It doesn't hurt to apply. And being in good practice for applying for grants is a good idea. I talk about um, this in the um, fundraising and grant writing webinar that I did that's on our um, website because it's, it's important to diversify your income base. I mean, now more than ever, we need to be, of course, you know, you're not going to be able to demonstrate in museums, but these are the things that I encourage people to do, you know, apply for grants, go into a local museum and offer to demonstrate for a fee, you know, try to um, see if you can get an artist in residency somewhere, um, you know, not just relying upon the arts making and arts marketing income of the physical art, but trying to give talks, you know, if you're, if you're good at that. Um, I think um, some of these people who are doing the virtual webinars that I showed earlier, like, you know, they'd be great in a museum, you know, when museums reopen, you know, giving a demonstration to the public about, you know, the baby moccasins and, um, you know, the culture surrounding that. So again, I'm going into, here's some other one, and, and I don't even know this one, Art Interrupted Emergency Arts Fund. And before I forget, definitely look at your state too. The state of Maine here offers a pretty small one, but it's $500. Um, but I think they're going to give out quite a few of those and $500 is, is $500, you know, so that's, that's good too. So each state has been given funding by the National Endowment for the Arts. So um, Google, um, whatever the name of your state is, for us, it's the main arts commission. So Google, say, North Dakota State Arts Agency and the state organization that is funded by the federal government will come up and they might have an emergency relief grant for the artists of that state. So you can see there's just, it just goes on and on here. And again, some of them um, may already be closed, but these again are all, here's one for Colorado. This fund provides grants of up to a thousand dollars who live in Colorado. Let's see if I can click on that, but <laughs> unfortunately my Screen is blank when I do. Okay. Uh, um, it's expired and no longer available. So that's, that's happening too. So I do encourage you to go to these, um, you know, and, and put in as soon as possible. 
because some of them have closed because they become overwhelmed. Um, uh, Tristan, sure. Question. Um, because you are um, definitely a veteran of the grant world and be able to apply for grants, do you have any tips or tricks or lessons you've learned along the way that an uh, artist that's just starting to write grants or get into this world for that type of support right now due to these difficult times that it would have been good to know when you first started off, I guess, so to speak. Sure. Well, again, you know, tapping into, you know, I sound like a broken record, but tapping into, let's go back to that, um, tapping into your values. Um, th that's really compelling. Um, you know, when you're writing about yourself and your artistic practice, you know, for, for people to understand where you're coming from, you know, what, what values are you based in as you practice your art, whether you live in your community or not, you know, it's still going to be um, values based art practice. And, um, you know, that, that, I guess, is, is the biggest thing in the point of this whole webinar. But also, um, just being, you know, straightforward and answering the question to the best of your ability and, and from your heart, you know, I know it's difficult for Native artists to talk about themselves, but, you know, along with the values you do need to list, you know, things that you're good at and what are your accomplishments and what is your vision going forward, you know, what, what, what are your goals and outcomes to where do you see yourself, you know, um, how do you see yourself thriving with a little bit of support? And then um, again, addressing in this particular time, you know, um, I, I, I mentioned that I was an elder. I've never mentioned that before. <laughs> My hair is, um, is, is proving it, you know, and so I'm actually going natural with my, my hair color, which is, which is another kind of breakthrough for me personally. But, um, you know, um, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm playing the elder card, but I'm just sharing that, you know, the things that are, um, you know, they kind of go along with my mentoring aspect too, that it's important to me now to make sure that I leave a legacy and that goes along with, you know, I, I don't know if you say, I hate that word need, but that's the word that's in the artist relief grant. So in other words, you know, I, I think it's an asset, but just trying to qualify like who you are and, and, and what you have to offer through your art practice. And you know, what your, um, what your situation is too during this COVID-19 time. I know a lot of people are caring for family members, you know, or selflessly. I see the First People's Fund artists too, who are spending a lot of time, you know, going out to get groceries for their family, all kinds of things like that, you know. And so that's not typically what you would share in an artist grant, but these are different times and these are kind of the things like your self-sacrificing work that you're doing right now would be something that you you would share. Thank you, Teresa. I don't know if that completely answered the question, but and again, this is something we can talk about on Wednesday and or people can email me. I'm going to that final slide again for the email. Sometimes my accent, people don't always understand it. So that's my, that's my email. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to do what I can, you know, to try to encourage people to apply for these grants and be successful. I didn't mean to make this webinar all about that, but yet this is really timely and something that I think is, um, you know, I want to be helpful. And so talking about our vision and values is, is good. But it's, it's relevant also to, you know, understanding, characterizing who you are right now and how you project that through your art and keeping yourself centered, you know, um, through your art practice and projecting that, you know, to try to apply for some assistance and keep your work going and keep applying for other opportunities as well. Keep moving forward. I think that was something else someone shared with me was, you know, just, just keep going ahead, just keep going forward. And that was really good advice for me when I, you know, kind of got worried about too much of, you know, what's going on with the pandemic, you know, my parents and things like that. And, you know, really 
can only do what we can do, you know, and that is our art and that is, you know, staying true to our values and, and that's going forward and looking at what comes next, you know, what's our, what's our future. Thank you again, Teresa. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. And again, feel free to follow up with email. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday where um, I'm happy to go in the nuts and bolts of um, grant writing. And it doesn't have to be just for um, the relief grants either. We can talk about the First Peoples Fund grants. There's a great little, uh, may start off with Robert Martinez uh, webinar, actually, um, not his webinar, but he has like a three minute video on how to apply for a free people's fund grant. And I actually recommend whoever's asking those questions to go to the first people's fund website and find that because he talks about how to apply for a first people's fund grant in a little great little YouTube video that I think is only like three minutes long. And so even though it's applicable to our grants through first people's fund, a lot of the tips that he shares are applicable to to any. So go through that. Um, and I think, you know, it'll be really useful. Thank you so much, Teresa. And I guess okay. I sign off. I just want to remind everybody that we also do have in the month of May, we're going to be having Roxanne Best focusing on marketing. Uh, uh, Tanea Winder will be focusing on a topic of performing arts. And we'll also have Leslie Deer here um, in the month of May to talk and focus on an artist calendar. So um, again, thank you so much, Teresa, for your subject matter expertise and your experiences with us. We really appreciate your time. So thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I hope I helped uh, help people out with that. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks again. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, Zoom. <laughs> see you next time. Bye. Bye.